Black House inside the North Park here at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, as we continue day two of competition for the individuals of the 2021 Noble CrossFit Games. Classic CrossFit triplet, a little juice to it. Oh, um, <laughs> just add a little bit of the juice. And <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to add five feet to the rope climbs of a traditional 15 foot rope climb. Now, the women are going to uh, ski 400 meters. But again, one of the heaviest sandbags we've ever seen in CrossFit competition with one of the most unique shapes we've ever seen for a sandbag. Second and final heat is underway. 12.33.31 seconds. That's your time to beat. Belongs to Samantha Briggs, who put that up in heat number one. 36 total scored repetitions in this event. Nine per round. Don't go too fast, too soon on these first four rope climbs. And rope climbs... We'll say this about a few movements, but you, you find a rhythm with a rope climb. You find how many pulls it's actually going to take you to get to 20 feet. Most of these athletes are used to 15. 20 is very rare to have an affiliate. You're talking about you're going to need at least 22, 23 foot ceilings just to hang a 20 foot rope. So you rarely see this outside the CrossFit Games. Laura Horvath was one of the first women off of the ski, as was Tia Toomey and Catherine Davis, daughter Emma Tall and Danielle Brandon, all getting there at essentially the same time. There is Annie Thoris' daughter, former two-time champ, making her 11th appearance at the CrossFit Games, the only athlete to compete in three different decades. Wow. I mean... There's so much rich history at the games that Annie has had been a focal point of. You think about the original CrossFit team, Annie Thoris' daughter at the 2009 CrossFit Games where she was just trying to get her first muscle up. Flash forward 14 years later, we're doing 48 on day one in a row. This is how much the sport has evolved and now she's inspiring teenagers and young girls all over the world that are now competing here at the CrossFit Games with Annie Thorsada, with Mal O'Brien and Emma Carey. Laura Horvath and Katrin Davis are fighting for the lead, and Laura Horvath had some impressive performances here inside the North Park in 2018. Yes, she has, and she did it. She made the biggest statement of her rookie year was in two-stroke pull here at the North Park Stadium that had, I don't know, some tough monostructural movements between a bike and a run and then a sled pull. And so if you look at an event like this, also with Laura Horvath's background, is that she was a rock climber. Her grip and her pulling strength is elite in a field of elite athletes. So look for Laura Horvath to actually make a big move every time she comes to the road. And she is first onto the bag. Annie Thoris' daughter will be second. Horvath was done before Thoris' daughter had that thing lifted up. Haley Adams also on the bag as Annie Thoris' daughter tries to stay in second. Danielle Brandon as well. Tia Toomey in the middle of your screen in the red pants. And then Catherine Davis' daughter right in the middle in those long green pants just dropping her bag as Laura Horvath looks to maintain her lead here. And Laura Horvath, it's just good to see her back in contention and competition, having that rookie year success and then really falling off, almost falling off the map over the last few years. Some injuries, not really being in the best shape that she needed to be to come back and compete. But hey, a lot of pressure, right? It's, it's almost easy to be the surprise year one. It's much harder to have the expectations that she had going into year two. But I like this bounce back year we're seeing from Laura Horvath. Laura Horvath in 2018 went toe to toe with Tia Toomey on a few events. The last time we were competing in an event here for the women, that woman went toe to toe with Tia Toomey and won. Mal O'Brien, what more can you say about her performance to end day number one? Let's go down to Nikki Brazier with more on Mal O'Brien. Pay special attention to how quickly Mal O'Brien is doing these rope climbs. She told me before this event that going out too fast on the rope was the one thing that she was concerned about. She's super confident in odd objects. The, the, the cardio piece of this was no problem, but rope climbs, she said she was going to have to figure out how to pace appropriately so that she didn't sort of blow out the whole thing on the rope. Right now, Mal O'Brien in 14th place in this heat. Laura Horvath continuing to lead here. Larry said, these ladies going to 
And Horvath is another woman who made her competitive debut as a teenager. She was 19 years old when she competed at the Meridian Regional in 2016. She finished seventh that year, didn't qualify for the games, but it was very clear that she was going to have a bright future ahead of her. And she's very well-rounded outside one singular movement. And it's a handstand push-up, more importantly, a strict handstand push-up. And that's really derailed her career over the years. And I mean, de like, it kept her out of the CrossFit Games one year. It kept her out of contention for a, po a, a winning position. And before, we've seen it at Dubai in semifinals. But if you can get everything else around that at top-notch level, you can sustain a little blow with one event that may have it in there. Laura Horvath is way ahead of the field. No one else is off the skier yet, and she is done with her second carry. And what I like that she's done is that, listen, if you're just going to be bad at one thing, sometimes athletes make the mistake by putting all of their effort into that one thing, and they start to lose some of the things that made them great to begin with. Laura Horvath is never going to be elite at handstand push-ups. So what is she going to do? She's going to work on them, but she's going to be, instead of being good at everything, she's going to focus on trying to be great at other things to mitigate the damage that a handstand push-up could have in a competition. Gabriella Magala is in second place. Haley Adams right now in fourth. She's ahead of Tia Toomey for what it's worth as Haley Adams sits in second place, 57 points back of overall leader Tia Toomey. Adams looking to chip away at that lead here in this event. Here are your overall standings for the top five coming into this event. Toomey with those 397 points, three event wins and a second on day one. Adams with 340. She's nine points up on Kristen Holta for second and Chrissy Aramo, O'Connell, and Daniel Brandon rounding out the top five. Haley Adams, who currently sits in third place in this heat. She's on the right of your screen. I mean, you can't talk about a high-volume rope climb event and not think Haley Adams, especially when you add in the ski. And when you, the only weightlifting component of this event is that sandbag. And it's 42 feet. It lasts 10 to 15 seconds. Danny Spiegel is hobbling as she lifts that bag, and she is clearly not 100%. She's in dead last in this heat in 18th place, 16th overall coming in. Danny Spiegel trying to pick up the pace, but it is clear something is not right with Danny Spiegel. But everything going right right now for Laura Horbath. Got to hit 27 reps before she will close out round three. Danielle Brandon, fifth overall. That's a pretty short pull for Danielle Brandon. And if I was, you know, especially when you're coupling this with high rope climbs, is that you got to reach up. You got to reach up and extend your arms and give them a break. If you're constantly sitting in that bent arm position, you're using all the muscle groups that are getting blown out on the rope climb. So, and just efficiency of a stroke. That's not how you ski her, right? You got to be long, have nice long strokes, a lot like swimming, right? Swimming is length of stroke and technique. That's exactly the things you need to see on a skier. So I'd like to see her lengthen up her stroke a bit. Laura Horvath is off the skier for the third time and continues to increase her lead over the field here. Horvath also way ahead of Sam Briggs's pace. Briggs with the time to beat at 12.33.31 seconds. Horvath is done, and Gabriella Magala now just got off the skier, the two of these women training partners. Haley Adams now is in third place. Adams trying to catch up with Magala. Adams just now getting to the sandbag. And that's great for Haley Adams, who's sitting in second place, just under 60 points behind Tia Toomey. Here comes Tia Toomey, who is currently in sixth place in the heat, but she does have a 57-point cushion over Adams for first. Kristen Holta now also working her way to the sandbag. Toomey is in as Laura Horbath is back on the rope. And there's Gabriela Magala, who's trying to keep pace with her training partner, but... Horvath has a gigantic lead coming into this fourth and final round. 
Magala 15th overall coming into this opening event of day two of competition for the individuals. Laura Horbath is creeping closer to finishing her rope climbs as she has. Wow, and now the onto ropes. the ski erg with plenty of time to go before we hit Sam Briggs's mark of 1233.31 seconds. Now Horvath's biggest weapon was her rock climbing background, we said, with her grip. And what that is, it's not just the strength that she had in her hands, but it's the confidence she has in fatigued hands on high rope climbs. A lot of things you look for in the last ski is body language. How are they looking? What type of face are they making? You'd be surprised that just changing the way you can relax your face relaxes the rest of your body. We'll say this a lot to some athletes that I coach. It's like they'll, they'll squint their eyes and furl their brows and they'll make that pain face, right? That classic cross of pain face. I don't see that from Laura Horvath. And that does make a difference. Coaches will say is like, listen, just relax your face and it will relax your body. If you can relax your body, it'll relax your heart rate. So you can still put in the same amount of effort, but don't strain to do it. And Laura Horvath's body language is speaking volumes for her in this event. Laura Horvath inside 200 meters, now 100 meters to go on her ski. Gabrielle Magala sits in second. Haley Adams is in third. Two spots up on Tia Toomey. So Adams again looking to cut into Toomey's lead for first place. And she's getting some help from Kristen Holta at the, mo at the moment. And Davis Otter was close within that group as well between Toomey and Holta, as well as Chris Irmo O'Connell. Laura Horvath is off, and she's going to waste no time getting back to that sandbag. Laura Horvath looking for her fourth career event win here at the CrossFit Games. The bag is up, and Laura Horvath. Safe to say that she is back. Laura Horvath wins event five. Gabriella Magala is on the bag, and here comes Haley Adams. Magala looking to take second place in the heat and second place in the event. She is in. Haley Adams That's is big. going to come across in third place in the event, and she's getting some help right now. She's got it from two athletes, but she could get it from a third with Annie Thoris' daughter. Kristen Holta. And Christy Aramo O'Connell are in. Tia's going to edge out Annie Thoris' daughter to do some damage control, but Haley Adams is going to creep a little bit closer to the four-time champ. Here comes Catherine David's daughter, who's great at grunt work events. Amanda Barnhart and now Mal O'Brien making their way back to the bag. And Emma Tall will be coming into view on the bottom of your screen. Barnhart at the top. And a race between Tall and O'Brien. And it's going to be Emma Tall edging out Mal O'Brien. Brooke Wells. On the right side of your screen, Bailey Rail is on the left. She just picked up the sandbag. And Danielle Brandon is getting set to close out her event. Rail is in. Danielle Brandon is across, just ahead of Emma McQuaid. And now Emily Rolfe has finished. She'll take 20th in the event. And here is Emma Carey. She is done. 22nd place in the event. 1337.95 seconds for her. We still have Danny Spiegel left on the field. We heard the, we heard the horn, but we still have one athlete left. One minute to go before we hit the time cap. Danny Spiegel trying to gut her way through this event. I'll be interested to see what happened to Spiegel, whether it was something lingering from day one or something that happened in round one. 
in this event. Thirty seconds to go for Danny Spiegel. Give us some props for doing everything she can to finish this event out. Just knowing where you are on the leaderboard, knowing where you are in this event, but to keep pushing through that. That's good for Spiegel. Ten seconds. Danny Spiegel runs into some trouble on event number five and is unable to complete it inside the 15 minute time cap. The only woman, woman in heat number two who's unable to get across the finish line. Laura Horvath picks up the event win. 11.41.55 seconds for her fourth career event win at the games. As a result of that win, Laura Horvath has now moved up to fifth place overall. The top three are all well above the 400 point mark. Christy Aramo O'Connell, she is one spot off the podium, but 39 points out. And Adams picked up about nine points on Tia Toomey. Then that might not sound like, an, like much, but with 10 events left to go, those little pieces add up. But Christy Aramo O'Connell sitting in fourth overall, had to qualify through the last chance qualifier. What an amazing performance here so far in Madison. A lot more to come here on day two for the individuals. Stay with us, everybody. We'll be back in Madison, Wisconsin at the 2021 No Bull CrossFit Games.